Hi, and welcome to the sixth episode of Energy Conscious Art. I'm Ross Drago, and uh, usually I take one, maybe two paintings and talk about them. Uh, today is going to be a little different because I, I realized that uh, most of my friends associate me with the energy symbol paintings. The uh, um, uh, Many of them are triangles, uh, pentagons, hexagons, which I assemble into different uh, configurations like the one behind me. Uh, and uh, this time I, I'm going to uh, show you some of the things that I've never really shown. And those are my paintings of people. Uh, throughout my life I've, uh, I have painted people. I love to do that actually. Uh, but I've never uh, really uh, put them out there. So um, I just thought it would be interesting to show you that side of um, me and my work. So uh, let's take a look at some of my uh, paintings of people. Perhaps I've made uh, better paintings, paintings that uh, were more significant in a more painterly way, but none are more significant to me than this painting. And the reason is um, because uh, about 33 years ago, I was um, walking up the street and um, a woman that uh, I had seen several times before and knew her friends uh, and knew a few things about her uh, was sitting on the sidewalk in a chaise lounge waiting for a tow truck. And I took the opportunity, uh, that is the fact that she was sitting in the middle of the sidewalk uh, where I had to walk, to um, say hello and invite her up to my apartment, which was two houses up, to see the painting I had made of her guru, who was Osho, Bhagwan Rajneesh. And... Um, she accepted the invitation and she came up and she saw this painting. So that was my way of introducing myself to her. Actually, when she got to the apartment, she saw my painting of the Last Supper in energy symbols and um, she later confided in me that that was the painting that caught her interest. At any rate, for 33 years now, we have been together, and uh, I always feel that this painting was uh, uh, initiated that. So that's why it's a very special painting to me. Here is a detail of Osho, and the title of the painting is called Spiritual Teachers. And um, there's also a portrait of um, Paul McCartney in this, which I uh, will show you now. And I, like many, many people, believe that they were um, great teachers, that is, the Beatles, and uh, certainly saved a lot of minds during the 60s and 70s. And uh, they were definitely spiritual guides through those times. And during the 60s and 70s, I lived in uh, Berkeley, California, and um, the streets were amazing. And this was one of the scenes that I saw on the street. Um, it was all casual. It was all, I thought, amazingly wonderful and close. Everyone seemed to be family. And so a scene like this, which would be very, very shocking today, was um, something that you just uh, walked by. And um, uh, the energy symbols behind in this painting uh, simply describe uh, their um, becoming parents. I tried to capture in his face the 
countless emotions that come with being a father for the first time. And um, his contemplation, his acceptance, his wonder, his amazement, and his transformation from cool guy to father. This painting is entitled Family Detail. The mother seems to be uh, much more accepting of the entire situation. In Berkeley, California, I noticed that people who jogged, joggers, stopped for nothing. They just kept moving. That's why I was so impressed with this scene where a blind woman had accidentally walked diagonally into the street and was walking across from one corner to the other uh, in the crosswalk. And she was really quite lost. She had really lost her way. And this man, who was a jogger, stopped, ran out, and embraced her and guided her to a safe place. And I was very, very impressed with that and I went home and I painted them. In doing so, he also stopped traffic from four directions, which I thought was heroic. This is a portrait that I made of my father, who was a painter, a great painter, who painted in many styles, uh, and was an amazing inventor as well. He worked at Bell Aircraft, which was in Niagara Falls, and I painted him in front of Niagara Falls there. He taught me everything that I know about art. I was very spoiled by the time I made it to art school. And uh, to me, art school was a social event. He was so thorough. He shared his studio with me. He taught me to use every art medium. I would make a painting and wait for him to come home from work, and we would talk about that painting. I'm sure he was exhausted, but he never, never let me down. And he was always there as a teacher, even though he never wanted me to become an artist because he said the life was too hard. When I was younger, I made this self-portrait, oil on canvas, and um, I liked it. I always liked it. Um, I think it actually looked like me in those days. but. Um, I just love the light around it, that Rembrandt kind of candle light. I've always loved that. For many decades now, I've been a little obsessed with um, the idea of creating a culture that was energy conscious, void energy conscious. And I call this culture Equilibrians. In fact, I wrote a book called The Equilibrians, where I um, uh, develop this culture as completely as I can. It's physics, it's visual language, it's politics, um, it's art. And this is a fragment from Equilibrium uh, when the walls of Polaris came down and this individual, all of the Equilibrians, sometimes wear magnetic headbands, and this induces a very deep meditative state. And I, I always include that when I paint Equilibrians. Uh, it's a fragment of cinder block. I'm sorry, it's not cinder block, it's concrete, broken concrete. It's oil on gesso, on concrete.
And I did many of these. I love them. I love the idea that it implied that there was once a great wall with a huge mural on it, and that wall had crumbled, and these were fragments from it. In fact, the wall never existed. These are just pieces of what it would be like. And I love being able to paint parts of faces, hands, scenes, reaching out, and um, many other people like these as well. Many of my friends have fragments from equilibrium on their lawns or in their homes. I once had a dream that I was one of, um, I believe, five or six men who were all in white togas, and we were in the center of a square, and uh, it was like ancient Greece. Only it wasn't Greece, it was somewhere else. Um, and one of the men, one of the men was a huge man, and he had a big leather belt. And what had just happened was we had just been overthrown. We were senators or something. And we knew that it was just a short, short time before they came and executed us. And the, and the very large man, who seemed to be a leader, said, we will meet again in 10,000 years. And then someone else said, but how will we know one another? And he very, very um, unsuspiciously, I guess, I don't know if that's a word, reached under this great belt and he pulled out a magnetic headband and I saw the configuration on it. Uh, and it was, it was a specific polarity. And I memorized that. And he said, we will wear this. And when I saw that headband, it was leather with battery lugs for markers going around it, eight of them. I understood that whoever wore that, the values that we stood for would be imparted into that person's mind. And we would be preserved in that way. And when I woke up from the dream, I, uh, it took me a couple of days, but then I bought some magnets, I took an old belt, and I made a magnetic headband. And um, I was afraid to put it on. I thought I would hear voices. I didn't know what was happening. I, would, I thought I might even be transported to some other place. But I did put it on, and I began receiving a very, very crushing feeling on my head, like my head was in a vice all the way around, and I quickly took it off. And then I realized I must have the polarity exactly backward. And so I flipped it inside out, and that rectified all of the polarities into the opposite phase. And I put the magnetic headband on. And when I did, I began to experience the deepest meditation that I have ever known in my life. I began unfolding like a flower that kept opening and opening and opening. And I reached such a peace that I realized even making conversation, describing what I was experiencing to the person I was with, was only a matter of fear. I stopped being utterly afraid, and I, I didn't even answer the questions. I just sank deeper and deeper and deeper into absolute peace. It was astounding. And that's when I understood what they stood for. They stood for equilibrium. They stood for being the void. 
And um, that's that really changed me. And after that, all of my artwork became expressions of equilibrian values. In this painting, I was very fascinated by the idea that Christ in the desert had his last temptation, as they said. And I believe that that temptation was to not fear. I believe that probably a snake came up to him and he was totally at one with that snake. And that was so admirable to me. I tried to portray that depth of comfort with that situation, with that ferocious snake. I've spent some time in the desert and snakes are scary. And uh, to, to just be a perfect witness was admirable and amazing. Around that time, I had a very large two-story studio that I uh, sublet very affordably to other artists, as many as 35 artists. And um, at that time, some theater people called the John Body Players came to town from Cincinnati, Ohio. And they, the one woman, Stacy Huber, and her sister asked me to use the space to rehearse. Kelly, her sister, and Stacy, and six or seven other people all began rehearsing every Tuesday night in my studio. And so I began feeding them on Tuesday with spaghetti dinners and uh, sketching them. And that was a really wonderful time in my life. And uh, so these are um, a few scenes from um, what, I, what I painted on this uh, uh, polygonal piece that came off the wall. This was a woman who um, had shaved her head and um, one of the first women to shave her head in the early uh, 60s, mid-60s perhaps. And this was uh, a dress rehearsal. Then came the era of my making energy altars again, part of this equilibrian culture. My artwork is actually a kind of expression of the history of equilibrian art. Um, in the book, uh, The Equilibrians, uh, I show this uh, as if there was an actual history, uh, art history, to this culture. And I made many, many energy altars. Uh, this was one of my favorites that I kept. And um, it shows a future scene of um, a woman, an awakened uh, teacher, who is teaching um, spiritual concepts. And in the sky are electric flying machines, uh, very quietly flying, and uh, off in the distance is a great building, so that people live uh, close together, but in great buildings so that there is a tremendous amount of free and open land surrounding them and nature can be re restored in, in this equilibrian culture of, of my uh, creation. This is a close-up of her face and you see that she's wearing a, what I call the sign of equilibrium. It's embroidered into her clothing uh, and this energy culture uses the energy symbol language that I've created, again, for decades, uh, uh, they embroider it into their clothing, uh, they build it into their architecture. Uh, it's uh, a complete part of their life. They, they paint the symbols uh, in their homes uh, as ways of um, recording the history of the building that they're in, uh, on and on, 
It's a, a visual language that is both decorative and spiritual. Here's the facade of another energy altar. It uh, depicts a little girl really impatiently waiting while her mother sits there having her morning coffee and reading something no doubt very, very interesting. And the girl is, the title is Learning Patience. Um, and uh, I'm not sure whose side I'm on in this particular energy altar. I kind of favor the little girl. This is a very old painting. I made it back in Buffalo in a, a bar called Brink's Bar. I made a sketch, I took it home, and I made a painting of, of these two old men. They were, their conversation was, was so, so sincere, so deep, so incredible. And I, I tried to capture the feeling of, of their camaraderie of who knows how many years they had been friends. Uh, and it was all recorded right there in that bar in that in that moment and uh, I couldn't resist putting the reflection of a of a man from another time back there in the mirror uh, to indicate that their relationship was really timeless back in California hurled forward 30 years, 40 years in time. Um, a young man falls asleep, exhausted from work on BART, Bay Area, rapid transit. Um, he was just great looking and such bright colors. I couldn't resist making a sketch of him and uh, making this painting on a triangle. For a long time I made bar paintings that were like this, where I would take some tape, put it across, and then just scumble images out um, as if they were moments in time. This painting is called um, Destiny in the sense that those two were destined to meet one another. Um, you can see the trajectories. and. Um, I really enjoyed doing this. I made many, many of these paintings back in Buffalo and uh, and then again in when I came to Berkeley, California. And uh, I just I just loved the idea of that uh, those hundreds of images. And I began painting triangles, hexagons, pentagons, octagons, even. And assembling them and this is one of them and this is called Bernie and this is a configuration that has a uh, Bernie Sanders in the upper right and um, people from his audience in black and white throughout the painting and uh, it's assembled um, along with uh, colorful paintings of forces of scenes, of things that try to give a sense of the connection to the heart and to the actual world that we're in. These are details of some of the people who were at uh, the meeting. I wasn't at the meeting. I saw these images on television and uh, so I drew them from there. actually photographed many of them and uh, drew and painted from the photographs. I tried to get a, a sound of people applauding and appreciating uh, what was being said. These are in the process. Some of them are sketches, as you can see, of um, what later became full black and white paintings. They they remained black and white. They, they were never to be colored. The idea was 
to have them in black and white. I, I love that richness of the black and white next to the uh, colorful uh, triangles. This too is another sketch of an older man and a young woman. And um, I left this one. I, I just loved the, the sense that some were filled out and the others were a uh, white line only. And again, the whole configuration. And when I went to Cafe Lila, I fell in love with everything about it. Here's a portrait of one of the owners, Sam. Uh, I make portraits of his brother, uh, Moses, and many other people who worked there. It really became the place that made me so happy in Berkeley to sit in the garden in the back and have a cup of tea. And many of those times were spent having conversations with my good friend Billy Weprin, uh, brilliant, a painter, a philosopher, and um, this painting of him tried to uh, show some of the scope of the things that we talked about and his wonderful way of thinking. The painting is entitled Conversations with Billy Weprin. This is a detail of one of those moments in our conversation where he was expressing something that uh, I took a photograph of and um, made this painting in black and white. It's about 15 inches on each side. And here's another Berkeley Cafe scene. Um, this fellow could be seen around Berkeley, clearly recognizable by his one foot mustache. And uh, he was sitting there having coffee with his friend, uh, clearly giving advice. And uh, so I made a painting of them. I also tried to work my energy symbols into the background to somehow find uh, a way of making paintings of people and uh, also making my energy symbol paintings. I don't know if this is uh, successful or not, uh, but I sure love the painting. So that's it for these paintings. Thank you for watching. I hope that you got something out of that. And uh, please visit me at uh, rossdrago.com uh, where you can see my paintings. You can listen to uh, 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 short stories, audio, and um, uh, chapters from my books and uh, see a lot more of my artwork there. And uh, I hope to uh, see you next time. So please subscribe so that uh, when uh, I put up this next uh, Energy Conscious Art Talk, uh, you will be notified. Uh, thanks again, and uh, I really appreciate uh, your uh, watching this. Bye-bye.